Hello everyone, today I'm putting together this table topper called Midnight in Paris. It's designed by Monique Jacobs with Open Gate Quilts. It was in her quilt subscription box and we're just going to step through a block together and then some of the quilting. Enjoy! So the fabric kit came with eight different fabrics. Seven are for the top and then the backing was its own fabric as well. And I really like buying kits for this purpose. It would be difficult for me to go to the store pick out a bunch of fabrics that go together and then just buy a little strip of what I need of each because I would inevitably have to buy a quarter yard and have a bunch of extra or make a bigger project and it's just really fun to use a whole fabric line in such a small project and seeing all these little beautiful pieces of fabric. So it looks like a lot of cutting but it was just Pretty simple cu cutting applied to a bunch of different fabrics. I didn't make any mistakes with that. Went by really quick. And to start off this block, we start with the center square and apply these strips around the sides to give it this little border. And with this type of block, like each step of the way looks like its own finished block and kind of sparks this idea of like what if I just took the block at this point and made more that I like it. I mean it was just a lot of ideas came through. So here you have just a square surrounded by that cream color. Super pretty. And some behind the scenes. I didn't think I'd be showing in this video the way I set up my camera. I thought that I would be out of it and <laughs> you wouldn't see that I'm just sitting here in my robe. I worked on this late at night and I didn't want to be on camera, and I thought this would be the way to get out of it, but I was mistaken. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe I just need some, like, dress sleeves attached to my frumpy clothes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, so the next step is to take two squares and sew them on the opposite sides of this block from edge to edge. And I would take this over to the cutting board and clip off this quarter inch seam instead of clipping it with my scissors but I just wanted to stay right here and you can see like clearly I'm sitting next to a cutting mat but I didn't use it because I didn't want to scooch over and be in the camera <laughs> so <laughs> so here's where I'm at I went and recorded this it took 15 minutes to complete one block but with the rest of them I chain pieced them and it went by really quick. I th I'd say like it would be an hour of sewing start to finish just for the, the piece blocks. Because with Monique's pattern, she has really good pressing instructions. Uh, if you caught earlier, I had those two opposite corners that I sewed on and they were pressed in opposite directions. One was pressed towards the corner and one was pressed towards the center. And I do that again with these two squares and this you have to do two opposites and two opposites because you need your points to match up you can't just sew them all down or else you won't be able to flip the piece over correctly it'll be sewn down and so now we have this square in a square block and that looks really pretty on its own but we're going to keep going and add another piece of these strips along the edge. I didn't have to square up this block a single time while I was sewing it. Everything just lined up really well and not all of my points from that square and square were perfect but since these fabrics are a little busier it really hides it well. I mean I didn't stress about it and I think it looked fine in the end. Some of them were a little bit crooked but it all blends. So now we put on this last of these longer strips and someone had commented um, when I put the finished photo on Instagram, they said nice pineapple quilt. So I guess that's what this block is. I thought pineapple blocks had more layers to them, but and maybe that's this is the same concept. But this was a new block for me. I haven't made this before. Okay, so then we press out these strips and that looks really great as a finished block. I really love the way that looked when I took it over to the iron and just kind of 
took it in and kind of imagined what a quilt would look like with just that finished product. And so for this last round, we take those black squares again and do the same technique, but this time we can just go all the way around. We don't have any points to match and just do all four of them before we take the next step to clip and then cut and then fold and then iron. I really love using my laser light on this. I didn't have to draw on these squares, which would be a little bit harder since they are dark squares. You'd have to find some kind of marking tool that would allow you to see that line against the dark fabric, which I don't think I have anything like that. Maybe a pencil would show up or some people will put a crease, like actually fold an iron so it makes a hard line and then they can sew on that. But I just pop on my little laser. And so this is the final clipping and that finishes out this block. And so we had, you know, some blocks had green in the middle and some of them had black in the middle. And the very center square was different from all the other ones. And I was able to pick a square that had a pretty rose shape. So you could like even fussy cut these to be even more dimensional. But I love that. Okay, so I just did straight line quilting with this stitch in the ditch through each of these triangles throughout these diagonal lines. And then I did scallop decorative stitching and some little starbursts. I didn't do anything on the piece border. I just, that was enough stitching already in place to hold that all together. And that's the finished project. Thanks so much.